and welcome. In today's episode, I am turning this nice and cheap little amp into a really great amplifier. Say goodbye to fizzy eyes and a bad signal to noise ratio. I am showing you today how to modify this little cube into a fourth dimensional tesseract. <laughs> okay, that was a bit of an overstatement. Anyways, if you remember those cool rock cubes, stay tuned. All right, first of all, I'll show you one of the main problems with those small amps. They are noisy as hell, even at low volume. The preamp gain does not cure this problem. I assume the problem is in the power amp stage. So let's have a look at the schematic. After the preamp stage, which mainly consists of Darlington circuits, which by the way is one of PV's patterns to emulate tube amp behavior, we finally get to the power amp IC. It's a standard TDA2040, which is, oddly enough, not supplied by dual rails, but by a single rail. This means lower part count equals lower costs. Just let me take a look on the datasheet of the power IC, because I already have an idea why this thing has such a bad signal to noise ratio. Nope, I'm looking for single supply. Scrolling, scroll up. 10 years later. There it is. Remember this resistor, 22K. As you can see, this is the recommended value. In our PV schematic, we have 60 something K. Yep, 68. That's what I thought. It's a so-called feedback resistor. It determines the gain of the amplifier I see and is set way too high. I mean, you can do this, but the downside is additional noise. I think the engineers did this to meet the 15 watts requirement with a single supply rail while keeping the manufacturing costs low. A lot of manufacturers do this. The good thing is, we can easily fix it, but there will be a volume drop. So this is not a 15 watts amplifier anymore. Since this is more practice home amp, I see no problem by doing so. I will just install a switch so you can switch back to its original value. I bought it a week ago from eBay and someone lost the plaque inside. The build quality is quite good, I can't see any problems so far. But there's actually something I don't like about this amplifier. As soon as you plug in the mains power cord, the transformer draws some current, even if the amp is switched off. It's way better to put the switch between mains and the transformer. Maybe I'll fix that later. Okay, off camera I already hooked up the speaker manually and soldered wires to the feedback resistor R40. So I can put a 6.8k ohms resistor in parallel, resulting in a total resistance of 6.18k ohms. Of course you can try different values. For me around 6k is quite good. You can hear that the amplifier is already running. Now let me disconnect my parallel resistor. So with this little modification we get a way better signal to noise ratio. And now it would be great if we could tame the fizzy highs. Because even if you back off the treble pot it's not enough and it gets too muddy. I did this empirical off camera to not waste your time. A few additional capacitors solved this problem for me. And I came up with this modified schematic for you. My mods are colored in blue. They are switchable, so I can show you the difference later on. Before starting, a few words on my test setup. I recorded everything through an Boss RC1 loop station. This way I can just loop my recording and switch the different modifications on and off. Ok, let's hear the first example with all mods engaged. I am playing through the lead channel set on clean as a basis for all my pedals. The settings for those you can see here. Thank <laughs> you. 
now the loop. you can't get a 12 inch speaker sound out of an 8 inch speaker. That's just plain physics. You can't move the same amount of air, you have a different beam angle, but I think with this modification it's a great little amp, especially as a pedal platform. But what's about the built-in distortion? Let's find out! That was fun. It may not replace the tube amp I've designed and built in the previous episode, but compared to its size, it sounds really really great. And the best thing, it's affordable too. So if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching, take care and auf Wiedersehen!